riding the high or low side of the 3,000 pound mark, depending on how it's equipped. The Rockwood GeoPro 19FD off-grid specialized rig here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, with a very special custom upgrade. Last year, Rockwood came out with these amazing looking front windshields on their GeoPro series. But the 19FD didn't get one because it had a Murphy bed. But very much like the Mini Light Rockwoods, my number one question I received on our Rockwood GeoPro 19FDs is, can you get a windshield on it? Well, it wasn't standard, but I called the factory and they said, you know what, we use the same nose cap, the same front wall on any of those. We can absolutely do it. So, for a few hundred bucks more, ladies and gentlemen, you've got the best looking, sexiest little 19FD this little world's ever seen. I would normally show you this RV with the bed in the up position, but considering that front windshield is really one of the driving forces behind, you know, the way that we've custom built this, I thought, why not show it in all its glory? And it is pretty cool. Now, here's what's really neat about this. There's a lot of people that buy this camper and they go, what if I don't care about a Murphy bed? What if I just want a walk around couples camper? Well, congratulations, you have that too. And especially when the bed's down, if you're one of those folks during the day, uh, this gives you such awesome window coverage. It's not even funny because whether it's from that kitchen window all the way around through the door to the dining window over here, this thing gives you some pretty stellar visibility of your campsite. And another thing it's going to do is uh, also provide some pretty good cross breezes uh, in this RV if you are boondocking and off-grid, which is one of the main purposes of this. Now, as always, this is a Easy one-piece Murphy bed. It's one-piece mattress. It's on a locking mechanism so you don't get lawn chair dumped up into the headboard. While the bed is down, I do want to point out, over here, it's very obvious that we have USB plugs next to that inverter monitor. But up there, you can see that black plug. If you are a CPAP user, phone charger type person, whatever, you've got a perfect spot for that. But there are also outlets on this bedside stand as well. Very alarm clock friendly up in that little neck of the woods. Um, to flip the bed up, it is simple and easy. I can do it with just one hand. Pull the lever, lift up here. And I'm not even left-handed. How about that? Now all you do, you take these little bullet latches and lock those in place. Of course, I missed because, you know, not left-handed. But the fact is, that's really all there is to it, guys. So when you're traveling... Or if you have guests, or if it's a rainy day, you can just put the bed away, as it were, and expand your living space to give you something with the living space of a slide out without the length, weight, and cost of a slide. And with a quick push-pull, we flip that from a jackknife up into a daytime sofa, and voila, there we go. Now, these have always been carpetless, ventless in the flooring, easy cleaning, pet-friendly, ideal for um, non-nicely paved campsites, because again, this is an off-grid rig. Um, you know, with built-in solar, this also has a thousand watt inverter built into it so that you can run your household outlets in this RV just off your batteries. Understand if you're going to do that, recommended you get more batteries and more solar to help keep them topped off. Like all Rockwoods, they only know how to do more than just about everybody else. Like they have more lights per square foot in here. This is a full 13,500 BTU uh, upgraded roof air conditioner. But we will climb on the roof and I will show you how that does not increase the overall height of the camper, even though it's at the very top of the camper. Speaking of which, you can see the vaulted ceiling in here. I do not use tricky fisheye camera lenses because I don't believe in deceiving our clients like that. This is just how the RV looks. And I tell you, when they went from that original dark-ish decor to this very light, bright, modern, uh, white and gray tone decor, to me, it just really set it over the top. Um, smart placement of their control panel keeps it up here out of the way of the grandkids and little hands, as it were. And you will notice, as compared to um, a more traditional, what I would call like teardrop camper, um, like say uh, something like, like an R-Pod style, this is about the same weight, but it's taller, better cabinets, you know, because you can't mount cabinets on something that's got a, a funky little teardrop shape. But this is a traditional sized RV. But by using more materials like Asdell, aluminum, a different chassis, they were able to, uh, evil, evil, able to keep, there we go, the weight in check. Um, so this is all pocket screwed cabinet styles right here. So when you are jiggling down the road or off grid or something like that, you're not going to fall apart. 
Up here, we have our um, standard entertainment system. Now, at a glance, you're looking at it, and this is a very streaming-friendly Bluetooth stereo. It does have an HDMI port and a powered USB plug on the front, meaning if you're going to get like a Chromecast or Amazon Fire Stick or whatever, it's very streaming-friendly. But you notice there's no DVD unit. That's because this TV has its own built-in DVD player, so you're not occupying a bunch of potential bulky space here. Another note on this TV is that it's not household powered only. That is also a 12 volt powered TV. Again, handy if you are off grid. And then back here we have the switch to actify the Wi Fi. Actify? I can't speak today. Activate the Wi Fi Ranger. And uh, basically, the easiest way I can describe that, it's like this camper has its own built in router, effectively. Um, it's a little bit more involved than that, but it's that's almost like an entirely separate topic for an entirely different day, which sounds very. Similar to something that, you know, Winnie the Pooh would say, or at least the narrator. Doesn't matter, anyway. Dinette. Handy little couples camp and dinette. Now, there is a single leg here for stability, and then it does bracket to the sidewall of the RV. And what that gives you is a table that doesn't wiggle and jiggle if you bump it, or if you get up and you use the table for leverage. It's not going to spill coffee on your partner or your grandkids sitting across from you. This can fold down into a little sleeper, but instead of telling you about that, how about we just see it? Now, I'm also not going to try to insult you by calling that, like, adult-sized. If I had to, I could make it through a night on there. I'm a side sleeper, but I'd have to be curled up pretty good. I would not be stretching out my legs. Um, you notice that we've also got a easy access drawer for the storage under this side of the dinette. But inquiring minds are going to say, yeah, but what, over, what about over here? That side is not storage. There is stuff under it, mechanical stuff, systems that operate the RV. Neat little detail on these two. You see that we have the nice roller shades as compared to a very conventional pleated shade there. And again, every darn thing in this is going to open for airflow and you can reach right behind those mid cabinet beams to feel those pocket screws holding everything together. Better, longer, stronger. Now they're building on a pretty severe radius here, but note the fit and finish. Um, I don't always use the word crafted in an RV. Uh, I, I reserve that more for some more upscale, better done things. But I do think that this definitely qualifies for the definition of a crafted RV, not just a constructed RV. Opposite your dining is your kitchen arrangement. And once again, they utilized every inch of space without an ounce gone to waste. I also love the fact that they just spent a couple cents here and there to do just smart, simple, nice things like put these cabinet door struts on there so you don't have to juggle them open with your head. Big kitchen window right here too, and that does open for airflow, by the way. You would have very limited counter prep space in here, so they've done what they could by giving you a flush mount stovetop with that heavy duty tempered glass cover, as well as the countertop extension here. You do also have some pretty easy access kitchen outlets over there on the side for little appliances. Um, you know, drawers, cabinet space. One of the things that we consciously did here is this can be built with an optional propane oven. We have purposely omitted that because it would get rid of all of this storage space that you have right here. And the smaller an RV is, the more valuable that is. And to give up the biggest chunk of your kitchen storage or something, I just wasn't, it just didn't make sense. And we get a couple requests for one with an oven, but most people tend to agree with what we're looking at here. But I'm always open to input, guys. So you see the very efficient way that they've kind of utilized space to combine both the microwave and a fridge-freezer combo. Because that top section up there in that fridge, that does have a freezer chest in it. You just pull that drawer down and voila, there's your popsicles and your ice cream or whatever. But, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a small RV. You always got to decide which factors are most important to you. But the fact is, I think, if you really look at it, they did a great job of giving you 10 pounds of sugar in a 5-pound sack. But, and I think a lot of people are going to agree, most importantly, it does include the uh, handy Barley Poppinator 9000 series right there. Uh, you know, when you are off-grid and you have to crack open those bottles of uh, <coughs> sealed water. Anyway, back here in the bathroom, a couple details. The vaulted ceiling and the laminated ceiling allow them to place that skylight exactly where and how they want to, to give you as much headroom as they possibly could. And Rockwood doing Rockwood things, they have that um, easily removable... A uh, little shower caddy to keep your shampoos and stuff from constantly falling down in the shower. 
One little note here, since this is made for off-grid use, it has this little thing down here called the shower miser. And again, that's kind of a whole separate topic in and of itself. But long story short, what that does is instead of having to turn your water off when you're getting soaked up or whatever, it will reroute the water back into your freshwater tank. It's only designed to be used off-grid because if you use it on-grid, you could actually flood your freshwater tank. But the idea is that you can keep everything at the temp you want without having to um, you know, waste a bunch of water getting it back to where you want. And I love that this has an actual sink in the bathroom with you know outlets that are easy to get to. You don't have to wash your hands in the kitchen sink when you're done doing your business over here. Speaking of which, plenty of shoulder, knee, and elbow room around this ankle, ankle, angle, there we go, angle mounted toilet with a very generously sized linen cabinet here that actually does wrap around that corner. So I mean, if you have loose stuff, you don't want to fall out when you open the door to your destination, because this is in the back of the RV, it will bounce more. You can keep all that stuff dedicated right here. And the bigger Max Air vent fan that they have in all of their Rockwood travel trailers is capable of providing a six mile an hour breeze in this RV, which is absolutely awesome when you are not using the air conditioner and you just want that fresh air. So a lot of people fail to realize some of the really specific qualities of those Geo Pros. Um, they are not at all the least expensive single axle RV that we offer here at Halet RV. In fact, they might be the most expensive, but they're also the most popular. Um, you know, it's a very interesting thing that in the RV business doesn't usually happen, but in the case of Rockwoods, it happens all the time. So one of the specific qualities that's easy to miss is the fact that it's a weird body size. This is seven feet, four inches wide, which is very uncommon. Well, the reason being Rockwood has built their Geo Pros with two targets in mind. They are all to be either A, 20 feet tip to tail or less. This is exactly 20 feet from the tip of the coupler to the back of the bumper. Or um, 3,000 pounds or less before options are applied. If you go nuts at every single option, you can push this past the 3,000 mark. But this one, as you see it, usually rides exactly on that 3,000 pound line. Um, and uh, so this one kind of hits both of those targets. Well, if they built it a traditional seven foot wide, like most single axle little campers, it would be uh, a little bit under that. And they said, you know, we could push it a little bit and give people that extra little sense of space in there. And then they exaggerated it with that awesome vaulted ceiling inside and their light interior decor. Now, another thing, there's two other things that are really helping keep the weight of this in check. One is Asdell, and they are using so much of it, it's not even funny. They use it pretty much anywhere this thing is laminated, they're using Asdell instead of Luon to help keep the weight in check. It means it's a little more expensive. But obviously you're getting more for less weight. More trailer for less weight. That's the concept behind lightweight construction. Not cheaper, more expensive, but more trailer per pound, not per dollar. That's the difference. Another thing is their chassis. Just like Asdell, they're using a more expensive but lighter weight chassis to keep this thing in check. Now, a lot of single axle little campers will have a single propane tank, whereas this has dual propane tanks with an auto regulator that changes right over just like a bigger travel trailer. Neat little addition that they've thrown on here recently. I call it the little plug buddy, but it keeps your seven-way plug from dripping down in the mud. You can see that we'll curl those up as a matter of practice here at Halitz to get those out of the mud. Also, the little wheel on the front tongue jack so that if you park this in a small space, you got a garage, you want to squeeze it in, you can do that. Now, that is a front wind shield, not just a window, and there's a very significant difference in the uh, quality and strength of that glass so that if something does fling a rock at it, it's very likely to just deflect off, just like your vehicle. Same kind of glass, same kind of windshield. The rest of the windows are a sleek looking frameless that will tilt open, and tilt open frameless windows are notorious for looking great. They can be used on a rainy day, but they're not notorious for giving you the most airflow. That's why in the bathroom, you remember that bigger Max Air vent fan? That fan up there helps overcome the one shortcoming of these windows right here. Cool little outside utility shower in a very handy place and something that's easy to miss. All these Geo Pros are going to have a handy little sewer hose caddy right here. So you can keep your sewer stuff away from your fresh water stuff. Isn't that nice? A lot of people will ask about uh, the height that your um, you know sewer stuff is hanging down here. Is that a problem? We've yet to have a single customer with any of our Geo Pros smash up, bash up, rip off any of their plumbing stuff. So obviously it's at the correct height. 
So that's just, uh, it's a good question, but it seems to be an absolute non-issue. All of our lights, whether it's Taylor markers, will be all LED here on this Rockwood. Um, you know, it's, they're, they're brighter, they're safer, they last longer, they flash faster so the people behind you. To give you an idea, at 60 miles an hour, LED taillights will give the person behind you up to five seconds of additional stopping time. Guys, that's a significant amount of time. If you think about how much you travel, how far, at 60 miles an hour. And most people, frankly, tow faster than that, which they shouldn't. Uh, this also has a ladder on the back, which we'll use to get up there to take a look at things like the Wi-Fi Ranger and a bunch of other little odds and ends. But first, the patio. And being a little camper doesn't exactly have the biggest awning, but as Scotty would say on Star Trek, they gave her all she's got, Captain. <laughs> You know, they pretty much put the biggest awning on this thing they effectively could. Now, you might note there's a little space behind the rear awning arm, but manufacturers of awnings are really funny. They only make them in certain sizes. The next size too big would have been too big. The next size small would have been too small. Um, there's all sorts of fun little detail things, like there's a little side mount shelf that uh, I probably had displayed earlier that we've already tucked away at uh, you know, the time of this segment of the filming that hooks right on that black beam so that free-floating Coleman camp drill can get hooked up right there. You notice they just utilize every little nook and cranny too, and this is where you would access that little water filter, but you could theoretically put some storage in there. Oh, look at Jody. There's that little table right there so that we've got the uh, visual. Now it's leaning against those great Moride stable steps with those adjustable feet so this thing can get married up to pretty much any campsite you want. You'll notice this does have an anti-slam entry door. Another thing, it has a real window in the door with privacy shade built right in. That says thin shade ready, but if I look a little closer, you can see it does have the thin shade built in. It also has the little easy close screen door thing, so that if your main entry door is hanging open like this, and note that the main entry door can fully open without hitting the awning arm, and because that's a real window, it doesn't fully block the uh, main window there. We've also got side mount solar prep right here. We're going to get on the roof in just a minute to look at the full roof solar, but I thought while we're down here, we'd give you a quick look. One of the other things that we're going to see on the roof in just a minute is the Wi-Fi range. God bless that windshield. It really does set this thing off. I don't feel it's a functional item, but God bless America, that is a smexy looking hood ornament. Anyway, the Wi-Fi Ranger. Let's go take a look. Now, the view from the top, which is where Rockwood tends to look at most of the RV industry, is pretty great. This vaulted ceiling that I'm walking on right here, because this is a fully walkable roof, obviously I'm on top of it, literally and metaphorically. Um, it's something that not all single axle campers have. I've done videos on what I call beer can construction. There's just some RVs that you can't do what I'm doing. Now, a couple notes. When you get the uh, roof mounted air conditioner on a Rockwood Geo Pro, it does not stick up higher than things like your Max Air vent cap, than the TV antenna. So whether the RV does or does not have the air conditioner does not affect the overall height of the camper. And this is a full 13,500 BTU, but they spend a little more money to give you a low profile for height reasons. Now, when these first came out, the solar package was optional. We've never had a Geo Pro uh, without one that could possibly have it. This has now become standard having this 100 watt uh, solar panel built in on the roof up here so that, uh, you know, it gives you the ability to extend your RV lifespan. Now up there's the Wi-Fi Ranger right next to the solar prep. And basically guys, this camper effectively has its own built-in router. Now, pardon my unfortunate footprints on the roof of this thing, just with uh, the weather being what it is and me getting up here, I'm leaving a little bit of a trail behind me. I better not commit any crimes currently, but um, the good news, they won't be there when you take this RV home because one of the things we do at Halo RV is we, you know, part of our no fees thing, we wash the RVs inside and out, top to bottom, so that you don't see stuff like this. And remember, we do have that Max Air vent fan cover up here giving you that superior airflow even on a rainy day, which frankly, guys, in a little camper like this, using it off grid with a big 12 volt fan is gonna be one of its best qualities, one of the things you appreciate the most about it. And I think that'll give you a good idea. And that's what I'm looking for here, is to give you a good idea of the Geo Pro, and if you have any more in, in, you know, like personal specific questions, give us a call. We wouldn't have all these RVs if we didn't make a lot of clients and customers. And statistically, every single one of these is going to find a home three or four times this year alone. So whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery and everything between, we do it all at Halet RV, except for hidden dealer fees. We do leave those to the big box stores. They seem to enjoy them. We don't. Neither do you, I think. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.